welcome everybody. Apologies for the technical problems that we're having at the moment and the fact that we can't have Karen in the room. We are desperately trying to get her back in. But in, in her absence, I will um, do my best to run through the slides that Karen was going to take you through. Um, Ed, if you'd like to move on, please. I think it's worth pointing out that um, from first the, the first national lockdown back in March 2020, and we're, we're almost at that anniversary, um, the, the, this council administered £43 million to 3,638 businesses. However, since then, we've been allocated some more money. And this, this particular presentation is focused on the grants that have been available since the second national lockdown in November. Um, during that period, uh, we have been allocated as a council um, an additional £40 million worth of grant funding. Um, there are, it's quite complicated, we acknowledge this, that there are currently about 15 different uh, grant allocations that have come from central government. They cover different time periods, different sectors, and they're broadly split, split into seven separate schemes. And I've got some slides to show you later on that detail those out. Um, these, 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 all these grants are intended primarily to support businesses that have either been forced to close or have been severely impacted by the COVID-19 restrictions. Um, all the mandatory schemes, which is 14 of those 15 um, allocated grants, are, come with strict um, central government guidance, uh, except for the additional restrictions grant, which I'm responsible for at the, at the council, where each local authority was given discretion um, to prioritise how that money was administered in, its, in each of its local areas, dependent on its priorities. Um, I, Ed, if you can move on, please. Thank you. So the next two slides, we're not going to run, don't worry. This is, you know, it's not, it, there's too much detail here, but actually we'll be sharing these slides afterwards. But these are the seven separate schemes that we've got um, um, available in Lewisham, um, covering both mandatory and discretionary grants. Um, some of these are time bound, so we'll come on to talk about that later on, but some of these grants, the application for them actually will run out at the end of March. The additional restrictions grant, which is the discretionary grant, we have a little bit more flexibility and we can, we can continue administering that up until March 22 next year. And um, actually, Ed, you can skip the next, the next slide as well. So it's just uh, more detail. So if I can cover the, the, the mandatory grants first, um, the government um, asked councils to administer grant schemes to businesses that were forced to lock down um, under tier three, tier four, both of those seem like a long time ago, uh, and also national lockdown. Obviously tier four was a local restrictions where there was local lockdown, but we are currently obviously been in this prolonged period of national lock lockdown um, restrictions, and there were grants to cover that as well. So grants under these schemes, the mandatory schemes, are only paid to businesses that are paying business rates um, to the London Bor Borough of Lewisham. And again, just to re-emphasize the point, guidance on who gets that money and how much they get comes from central government. We have little or no discretion as to how that money is administered. Um, the council has a list of those eligible businesses and will have contacted um, you as a business. If for whatever reason you feel that you've, you are eligible and you have not received this notification from our business rates team, we will provide you with a portal by which you can apply online. Thank you, Ed, you can move on. Um, with the mandatory grants, once the application is received, uh, and as, as just to emphasize the point, it's an online application, the council will confirm your eligibility and pay, payment will then be made into the business bank account ASAP. Um, the council's website provides details of the various grants available and we provided a link there. Ed has also um, helpfully provided in the chat a list of all the helpful websites, portals and newsletters that you can um, look into following this presentation. So as I mentioned before, if you are paying business rates and you believe that you are eligible for one of these uh, grants as a as a business rates registered business, then please use the online uh, portal which we provided here um, and address your queries to the business rates team. Thank you, Ed, you can move on now. 
So there are certain um, businesses who are ratepayers that are excluded from these grant schemes. And, and they are businesses, I'm going to give you a summary here, businesses that are not legally forced to close and can continue to trade um, at, because they don't operate their services remotely and have not therefore been severely impacted by the restrictions. Um, some businesses have chosen to close, um, but have not been legally forced to close, and unfortunately they will not be eligible for this grant funding either. Um, businesses which have already received grant payments, um, these are ineligible businesses. If, if you're a business and have already re reached the maximum level of state aid permitted, you equally will not be eligible for one of these grants. And the final category of ineligibility if you're a business that's in, in, in administration, you're insolvent, or where there's a striking off notice being served, you are not eligible for the funding under these mandatory schemes. Thank you, Ed. Um, moving now on to a, an area which I'm more familiar about, which is the additional restrictions grant. Just to give you an overview, we have recently um, launched phase two of the additional restrictions grant. Um, which is a discretionary scheme. So just to remind you, each local council will have been allocated some grant funding to administer to organisations, primarily small businesses in the borough, um, who in most cases have not been able to access the mandatory grant. We in Lewisham uh, put a, a huge focus on protecting jobs, and that is why those grant values uh, from two to 9,000 are depending on the number of people that you employ. Um, to be eligible for the additional restrictions grant, you obviously need to be based in the London Borough of Lewisham. Um, you, can't, um, that you can't have received a grant for the premises from which you are operating your business from, an, from another local council. You need to have been trading. Uh, when I say trading, uh, we know that all businesses have been impacted and you may not be in trading as much as you would like to have been, but you, your business need to be, needed to be viable uh, and in place on the 4th of November of last year. Also for these grants, you need to demonstrate that pre-COVID, you had a grant value, sorry, you had a, a revenue turnover value of at least 10,000 pounds per year. Thank you, Ed. So in Lewisham, like in every other borough, we have a number of priority sectors. However, these grants are available to all businesses in all sectors. There are other eligibility criteria, which we'll you, we will come on to later on. But our priority sectors in this borough are businesses that are operating in shared workspaces, businesses that are in the cultural, creative, evening and nighttime economies, childcare providers, and for the very first time, home-based and self-employed businesses. And the final ca priority ca uh, category for us is affordable workspaces. So these are organisations that are providing affordable workspace across the borough. And we have a plethora of very, very small businesses that uh, do not uh, need big office space, but just need small rooms or co-working spaces in order to sort of um, run their business. Thank you, Ed. You can move on to the next slide. You are ineligible for the additional restrictions grant if you are eligible for one of the mandatory grants, which is the closed business lockdown payment, um, which is in effect the third lockdown mandatory grant. Again, like the mandatory grants, if you're in administration, you're insolvent, um, you're ineligible. If you've reached the state aid, state aid limit, you're also ineligible. And um, if your business has not been closed or severely impacted by COVID-19. In the application form, which is again online, you'll be asked to demonstrate how your business is, has been impacted by COVID-19. Um, there's further guidance uh, available, both in the chat, um, helpfully provided by Ed, but equally here. We'll be sharing these slides with those that want them afterwards. But please do visit. This particular page is just to do with the additional restrictions grant. Thank you, Ed. Uh, this is the general page, so there are, there are a number of grants. If you were looking to access, not just about um, you know the local restriction support grant and additional restrictions grant, but also if you want to look at the uh, other uh, wider business support that's available, this is your 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 portal into that. Thank you, Ed. Um, Helen, I'm not sure if you're going to introduce Nolan, but. We thought it would be a good idea if we heard from one of the many businesses that have survived and indeed thrived um, um, during COVID. And, and 
Helen, are you going to introduce Nolan from the Rise Cafe? I am going to introduce Nolan from the Nolan West from the Rise Cafe. Over to you, Nolan. We want to hear all about your success story. Hi, oh, darling. Thank you so much. That's so you lovely. No, of course. <laughs> Have we got Nolan? No, Nolan. We've lost Nolan. Yeah. Okay. I think he was there to start with. He was. Um, Helen, so, let's, let, let's hello. see. Sorry. Oh, Hi. we've got Nolan. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Nolan. Can you see me? No. Yes, we can. We can see yes. you and hear you. Yeah. Okay. Can everyone see me? Um, I, well, never mind. We can see the very nice picture of oh, the right. okay. cafe. There. Okay. And if you can hear me, that's now. fine. Okay. Well, so just give you a quick, I'll give you a quick rundown of what, what we do here. So we've been open for about two and a half years now. We're a uh, usual coffee shop selling the usual uh, scrambled egg on toast, avocado, smashed avo, eggs benedict, stuff like that. Uh, and we've also, just a week before Boris's announcement, we opened up for burgers in the evening, which was always a long-term plan of mine to start doing burgers and beers and stuff in the evening. Uh, and obviously, we got the announcement from Boris a week before we, um, a week after we actually opened for burgers. So pretty bad timing on that front. Uh, however, uh, well, from that point, we closed for up to six to seven weeks. So the restrictions were put on us meant we... Once we reopened, it meant we couldn't sell our usual food. Uh, I, the cafe is very close to a, a local school, so we would always get um, school mums and dads coming on the school drop-off and pick up, and also mums with babies and dads with babies coming in for coffee and tea and cake. Uh, we also have a, luckily have an outside space with bench. We had benches uh, where people could sit outside, which was which was great for us. Um, and when uh, it all first kicked off, uh, obviously it was all in the news about the grants. Uh, so we looked in, I looked into that. Um, fortunately, um, we, we, I pay business rates. So I was fortunate to get that first grant and that helped cover the first, uh, well, six, all the time I was off, basically. I, I investigated into my landlord to try and get um, uh, time off from paying the rent and also a few appliances that I rent here, dishwashers, et cetera, ice machines, um, but unfortunately I had to keep on paying them. So that was very fortunate to be able to get that grant. Um, during the time off, um, I signed up to see the, the Mayor of Lewisham emails, uh, which I would get regularly through, which would be helpful in terms of learning stuff which the council could help me with. Uh, and through that, I found out also about the local restriction support grant um, which was very easy to do. Um, I signed up, filled in the online form, and ever since doing that, I've been able to, uh, oh, well, I've never not really had to do anything. And uh, fortunately, I've been eligible to get the grants, which have helped me immensely. Um, I've got staff which are actually still on furlough at the moment. Um, and uh, oh, what else? So in terms of uh, the impact, we, because we're by the school, we've lost all that trade. With the benches outside and the social distancing, I've had to get rid of those benches. And I've bought, I bought when we could sit outside, I bought smaller tables and chairs to help people sit down outside, but not be too close together. But obviously recently we've had to stop all that and also restrictions on alcohol. I haven't been able to sell any alcohol at all. But what I have done is, is I've been able to adapt. Um, fortunately, I have a window at the front, which we can serve out, which we call the hatch. Um, we serve coffees and teas out of that. And, Fortunately, the choice of doing burgers in the evening was a good one because burgers is a good takeaway option. You've obviously got fish and chips, you've got pizza, and burgers kind of fall into the category of a good thing to be able to take away. Um, and also during the day, whereas we before we did full Englishes, hollandaise, you can't really take that away, so I've adapted slightly. I'm now doing breakfast baps in the morning for people and also lunchtime sandwiches. So fortunately, the community around here, there's lots of people working from home. So in terms of uh, business for me, I do get the people coming for their lunchtime sandwiches. They need to get out of the house for a walk, for a coffee. Um, in terms of socially distancing people, I've had to take out all of the tables and chairs which I purchased uh, initially, and then all now inside and now outside. 
we try and keep people at a two meter distance when they're, they're purchasing their coffees, which has been quite successful. Um, and yeah, all I can say is thanks to the, the council for being pretty proactive in terms of uh, sending those mail, mail shots out. Um, that's how I found out about it. And um, everything's been okay for me since then, but it, I think it is a case of adapting to the situation, making sure people can still come and purchase something from you, but in a way which they can take it away because um, obviously they can't sit in and have the chats which they normally would do and eat the food they would normally do. So um, yeah, uh, all I can say is thanks for the grants, thanks to someone else, thanks to the Mayor of Lewisham for, for putting the mail shots out and the business team at the at, uh, Lewisham Council who keep giving me regularly updated with, with how they can help me. Thank you very much, Nolan. That was really fascinating. Um, and I think we'll all be coming coming to visit you when, when times are better. <laughs> okay, Broccoli. Sorry? We are 108, Rise Cafe. <laughs> We're on Broccoli Rise, 108, Rise Cafe. Excellent, I'll be there. Um, that's super. <laughs> now we've got some questions that have been submitted in, in advance. Um, Raymond, and I'm sure you're still with us. Is Lorraine with us? Do we know? Raymond? <laughs> okay. Helen, you're not you're not alone. Sorry about that. And um, so uh, I'm not sure if Lorraine is in the room. She may have been one of those people that struggled with her connectivity. But um, we were going to share the questions. Um, well, shall I do yours? Shall I just go to um, ask you? And Helen, uh, listen. Uh, the questions that Lorraine um, would have answered, please do come to me as well, and I'll I'll endeavour to answer them as well as I can. Yeah. Okay. What well, righty here? Well, I'm going to kick off. Um, so why is it taking such a long time for these grants to be paid? Um, I, I think some of the alarm that comes from businesses is that the government makes announcements uh, about monies being available, but it takes some time then for the, the funding actually to arrive in the council's coffers. But, but probably as important is the, um, is the guidance around those grants. Uh, as I said, the government is providing quite strict guidance eventually around each of these grants and who should get them. And it's in, we need to ensure that there's due diligence, due diligence in place, if you like, um, that the grants are being um, accessed by the correct businesses and we're receiving the correct information. We do apologise profusely to those businesses who have had to wait. Um, as Councillor Dromey mentioned at the, at the beginning of the, the presentation, it, it, we, we are very keen to try and get these grants to people as quickly as possible. So, um, OK. Yeah. Okay, that's super. Right, the next one. Um, I've received what I think are grant monies from the council, but I don't know what grants they're for. Will yeah. you be providing a remittance? Um, so this relates to the mandatory grants, the vast majority of the grants that we're administering. And unfortunately, the business rates team are not in a position because of the huge number of um, payments they're making to um, provide a remittance. However, um, we will, outside of this meeting, there is a link that... Um, the organisations can um, uh, register their details and the, and the council will then send them details of what those monies are. However, I would say also, if you go onto the council's website, it will detail the individual payments that are generally available for people that are accessing the mandatory grants. Uh, it's possible, I think, to link what your payments are with what the payments are on the website to know which grant you are being paid for. I understand that actually that's particularly confusing. I think where some businesses are getting a number of grants. So. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, thank you. Now the next one I've got is, um, question is, if I'm a business rate pay, um, payer and the council know I'm eligible for some of the grants, why do I have to apply? Can't you just pay the money into my account? This is a frustration we're receiving from a number of businesses. However, I mentioned before due diligence, we have to avoid, um, scam um, applications it's just not possible for us to actually just pay money into hey. bank accounts for businesses that we know it's one of the reasons we've got an application form that one we can we can validate their registration number and also their bank account details we would then check their bank account details so okay that's super um another one 
I run my business from home and have had no, no grant support to date. Are there any grants that support home-based businesses? Some other boroughs are supporting home-based businesses. As I revealed in my presentation under the additional restrictions grant, we are, this, for this phase, um, supporting home-based businesses. We had previously um, supported home-based businesses, but there was a requirement for every business that they at least had an additional uh, commercial space that they were renting. Um, mm. But for this particular grant, um, we are, uh, and it's one of the priority sectors that we, we recognise the, the high number of small um, home-based businesses that we've got in the borough. So yes, please, we would encourage you to put your applications in. Oh, that's super, right. Another one, my business has not been forced to close, but because our customers are restaurants um, who have been forced to close, we're getting no trade whatsoever. Am I eligible for a grant? Unfortunately, under the discretionary grants, I think generally, um, this is a question that Lorraine would have had more expertise in answering, but mm -hmm. give you my knowledge is that, that unfortunately, unless you've been legally forced to close, you can't access that grant. However, if you're not eligible for one of the mandatory grants, I would encourage you, please, please look at the additional restrictions grant. We have a lot more uh, flexibility around that. And we are supporting businesses that are not just closed, but have been severely impacted. And so it may well be that this business ineligible for the mandatory grant may then be eligible for the, uh, the discretionary additional restrictions grant. Okay. okay, thank you on that one. Um, are there any restrictions on what a business can spend its grant money on? Um, as far as I'm aware on the mandatory grants, no, there's no stipulation. We're not giving you this money um, and being prescriptive about what you spend it on. We hope as all um, responsible businesses, you will, you will use that money where it's most needed, um, be that to pay your rent, um, to pay for other fixed costs. However, I will say with the additional restrictions grant, one of the stipulations that was made uh, from the government and where we have no discretion was that the monies administered under the additional restrictions grant cannot be used to pay salaries. Yeah. Thank you. Are there, um Next one. I run a charity and, and, and they are not identified as one of the priority sectors for their AI ARG grant. ARG the ARG grant. grant. Yeah. Thank you, ARG grant. Does that yeah. mean we're not eligible? No, it certainly does not. And um, for the additional restrictions grant, we identified those four key priority sectors or, or groups of businesses that we're looking to support. But we did emphasise the fact that all businesses are entitled to um, put in an application. We are, we are not excluding charities or social enterprises. Mm -hmm. It has to be a legal entity or alternatively you're self-employed. We can't, yeah. We, yeah, we can't, we, we can't support through this grant process casual um, setups or partnerships. So um, the, yeah, my advice for that, that, that organisation, that charity is to please do look at the eligibility criteria, but you are not excluded because you are a charity. Excellent. Um, it's an interesting one. Why are, the why are the eligibility criteria for ARB not the same in every borough? Um, as I mentioned before, the, the government has given every local authority the discretion to administer this grant according to its priorities. And each borough will have its different priorities. They are also allowed to um, allocate as much money as they like. So you may find in other boroughs that actually they're allocating their R grant based on rateable value of a property, maybe. We in Lewisham, as I mentioned before, are prioritizing jobs. Uh, and that's the reason that we've graded all uh, the, the, the payments based on the number of people you employ. You will also have seen from the slides that even if you're employing no one, that you are still potentially, assuming you meet all the eligibility criteria, eligible for a, a minimum of a two thousand pound grant. Okay, thank you. Um, another question: I've got a number of sites, some of which are in other boroughs. Can I apply for a grant in every borough? So the grant process is based on the property from which you are operating in your business, either as a home-based business or as a, uh, you know. You, you may have a number of sites, but Lewisham can only uh, administer grants to, to businesses that have a premise, either their home or the business premise in the borough. It may well be that you're entitled to a grant for the other premises 
from that other local borough. And we have, see, we have seen instances of that. Okay. Right. Um, okay. Some businesses in other boroughs have already received an ARD grant, but I haven't received any money, any money yet. Why? Again, in actual fact, we've already um, administered um, since the second lockdown, three quarters of a million pounds of additional restrictions grant money. In some respects, the, the, the due diligence process of the additional restrictions grant is, is even more time consuming because a lot of the businesses are not known to us. Um, with the mandatory grants, we, we will have a knowledge of them through their rate paying. But with the additional restrictions grant, it's just taken a, a, a bit longer to go through that due diligence and to and to ensure that we're getting senior level sign off within the council. So we, we do apologize to those businesses who are waiting to receive either confirmation of whether or not their application has been approved or alternatively, um, they've been approved and waiting for their money to be administered. We are working as hard as we can. Okay, thank you. Next one. I'm employed elsewhere, but also run a small business. Am I eligible for the ARG grant? Okay. It, we do ask a question within the additional restrictions grant about whether or not it's your main source of income. Um, this, I, if you are employed elsewhere, then presumably your business, whoever you're working for, is able to hopefully access one of the, the, the grants. But as a home, if it's your own business, then yes, you can apply um, for the additional restrictions grant. What you can't do is um, blend your employment, the work you're doing through your employer, and also uh, your um, your, your self-employed business or your, your you know as a sole trader mm -hmm. that's a bit of a convoluted way but if there's any queries around that whole um business ownership out or operating more than one business then please do um field a, in, a, an inquiry via the economy and partnerships email address which we've again shared in the chat oh that's helpful thank you next one if a shop is not required to close but has hardly any business due to no footfall as all other shops are closed um, what grants are we eligible for if we're not eligible for the business support grant? I, th I think possibly, uh, I'm just reading into this question, it may well be that that is a business that's not been forced to close um, um, mm -hmm. and is therefore not eligible for the mandatory grants. Again, I would encourage that business, if they're in the audience today, if you're, if you're, if you're not eligible for the mandatory grants because you've not been forced to close, please do look at the, uh, the additional restrictions grant, which you may be eligible for. Okay, this one, this is, I think, um, this one's sort of related and the business that said we're automatically given full support grants from Lewisham after um, the application was marked as successful, only to receive a letter saying, and they had to return the money within 14 days because my shop was not required to close. Financially, we cannot afford to repay this grant in that short amount of time. Asking a small business to repay 9,000 in 14 days is unacceptable as this money has helped us keep our business afloat during the pandemic. I think this one is really for Lorraine, but can you help it is, us? It, it is, but I did discuss it with Lorraine. We work very closely together. We're in separate teams, but you know, the business rates team yeah. and the economy partnerships are glove in hand, really. So I am aware of this case and we apologise um, to, to, to this business. Uh, what Lorraine has previously mentioned to me is that um, we will need to recover that money because it's central government money. But if, if that business could get in touch to let us know how they could pay it back over what time period. We do understand that it's a really difficult time. Oh, that, that, that's really but interesting. I, I, actually, I do know who, who that, who, who that inquiry has come from and we will be outside of this meeting, we'll be in direct conversation with them, Helen. Oh, that's good. That would be really good news to them. Another charity question. Our charity is based at two sites, one of which is in Lewisham. Are all employees of the company counted counted as employees for this application? Because they're referencing employees, which is not a requirement of the mandatory grants, I'm assuming this is to do with the additional restrictions grant. Mm -hmm. um, it's possible that a number of organisations have got, you know, uh, based in, some of them are based in Lewisham, but have got sites all over the place. In order to um, us to verify how much or level of grant you get, we need to know how many of those people are employed in the premises in this borough. It's possible for a, an organisation to um, employ 100 people across London, five of which are in Lewisham, if you know what I mean. It's not based on where right. they live, it's based on where they work. Yeah. Right. Okay. 
Okay. Um, um, this is another one. We applied for a local restriction grant, LEG, and received a reply stating we should apply uh, for an additional restriction grant, the ARG. Yeah. In view of the pandemic and difficult environmental conditions, the application form for the grant should have been transferred to the team dealing with the additional, well, the ARG. Yeah. So well, that, I I, I can answer that. Firstly, I'm pleased that you see their evidence of how the two teams are working together. So they're not eligible for um, the mandatory grants, but the business rates team are referring them through to the additional restrictions grant. Unfortunately, the qualifying of criteria and the information that we require are different in the applications for the um, mandatory grants and the additional restrictions grant. So, um, in fact, we ask for a lot more information for the additional restrictions grant. And again, I think that person has also emailed into our economy partnership email box and I have directly answered them. They may be in the room um, as, at the moment, but yeah. Right. This is a bit of a strange, um, can you please advise if I need to reapply for the government grant? I'm confused as until now, um, this has been automatic. Yeah, it should be automatic. If you've accessed the, one of those, um, cyclical grants, if you like, which are based on time periods, um, then you will not need to reapply. But again, if there's any concerns, please um, email us and we'll we'll look into why there's been a delay in that payment. OK, thank you. And I think we're going to the end now. And is there any way to save an application and go back to it um, on, on the ARG phase two? Uh, unfortunately not um, so what you can't that, that what we do try to identify or, or alert people on the website is that there is some evidence that you will need to upload and it's useful particularly if you if you, if you gather together that information electronically so you can upload it at the time but you can't save your application and return to it if you come out of the application you'll have to start again however as long as your browser is still open the application will remain open Okay, excellent. Now what I'm going to say, I've seen there's lots going on in chat and we're not really, you know, so actively taking questions from chat, but what I am going to ask everyone to do, if you go, go into, if you'd like to um, answer the all important um, survey that we will be sending out regarding business support, we need to have your permission. So if you could give your email address um, can you go into chat chat now and, and put it up there, please? And also you'll see all the details of the grants. Oh, I can see people signing up. Keep on going. Oh. Are there any... I know there was a question from Sarah King, the FSB, about dry cleaners. Sarah, can I invite you to come in and ask that one directly? You with us, Sarah? Yes. yes, I am. Hello, thank you very much, Helen. Um, no, I just thought it was a useful one to raise um, because there may be similar small businesses in the room today. But um, no, just with regards to uh, dry cleaners as one example of an essential business that can be found on the high street. Yes. And obviously with high streets, they're really sort of severely impacted at the moment. And the footfall for many essential businesses on the high street have been severely impacted. And so it's just really to sort of put that question out there, um, if there are any other similar essential type businesses on the high street in the room today that might not be able to get the support that others have been able to access, is there any other sort of way that they can access that, access, access that support and obviously to get the support from the council going forward? Um, we, shall I answer that question? Helen? Yes, please, Raymond. Um, Sarah, you and I have talked about this before, and you'll be pleased to hear, maybe because um, you, because of your you, you've been an ambassador, if you like, for that type of business, that we've had a number of those applications in through the additional restrictions grant. I, I think as a sector, they feel they should have been closed, but they haven't been closed. And as we know, they're doing very little trade at the moment. But we have already approved, I think, a number of dry cleaners and using that as a you know, type of business as part of the additional restrictions grant in Lewisham. And we look forward to receiving more applications from that type of business. Thank you very much. That's really good to hear. Okay, Thank okay. you. Sarah.
that that's good and i've heard sarah talk about this one before and in the other boroughs that the chamber you know we cover i do know that under the arg grant the dry cleaners in particular because i've raised dry cleaners as well they they have been um they have received grants and i think the most important thing is it is really go online and see if you are eligible do you think that's right raymond yeah, I would encourage them that. And, you know, I, I think there are a number of businesses out there that feel um, that they should perhaps be eligible for the mandatory grant. And because of the guidance that we're trying to adhere to in, mm -hmm. in Lewisham, they're not. Um, if, 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 if that's a closed door to you, then please, please um, look at the additional restrictions grant um, to yeah. see whether or not you'll be, you'll be eligible. What we, uh, listen, we're happy to, to deal with inquiries via the Economy and Partnerships email address. But what we can't do is we can't confirm whether you're eligible or not based on an email or a conversation on the phone. No. I would suggest that you actually complete the application form. Um, I, I think the, the, you know, the, the, the criteria are relatively clear. And if they're not, please get in touch with us. Right. And, and the process, is, I mean, everything is online. You have to provide for, for, for the R grants. You know, you've got to access your bank statements. Yeah, bank statements, you know, particularly around employment, you know, we need confirmation that um, people are employed, you know, pay, yeah. pay slips or wage slips or uh, some sort of return that you're doing. Yeah. Um, we can't, unfortunately, I don't think we reached this, there, there was, I think, a question around um, whether or not volunteers or freelancers could be included in that employment count. And unfortunately, we're not um, allowing that. It can only be people that are genuinely employed. Th th those actually freelance businesses who may be courting their trade with a number of different contractors or people can actually apply for this grant in their own right yeah yeah well i think that's been um well i've certainly learned a lot and i hope everyone else has today um now we, we've seen so everyone who'd like to join the business survey they've put their um details in in the chat if you'd like to have the slides you're very welcome We've got this recorded. This will go up on our various websites. The Chamber will be sending out the survey on behalf of um, Lewisham Council. Um, Helen, can I just like, say one, yeah. one last point just to re-emphasise, and I know you've already done it, but please, um, there is a link um, to the uh, Chamber, the, the, sorry, the Council's newsletter. Um, originally, yeah. this was envisioned it would go out maybe once a month, but we're in a pandemic. It's pretty much going out weekly. And the support that's available to businesses is changing weekly as yeah. well. We know there are new grants on the way. There's certainly the, the restart grant, which we're still awaiting the full guidelines for. But if, if you don't want to be trawling over our website all the time trying to find something, if it's going to be new, it's going to be in that newsletter. So I would really encourage all small businesses yeah. to sign up to that. Yeah. And it really is an excellent newsletter. And I, and I, I totally endorse that. The other thing, I, and I know Councillor Reid said this at the beginning, um, and maybe we can, we can send this, this link out as well. The government, our um, businesses, you'll be able to register for lateral flow, um, uh, you know, COVID testing. Whereas currently the rules are you have to have 30 or more employees to, um, to be able to receive, and it's all free you know, the, the flow test. But as long as you register before the 31st of March, all businesses will re will receive the test. So that's one of that's going to be tremendous for Nolan, you know, and, and, and the Rise Cafe, because then you can test all your staff. And currently the government are being, um, all this will be free till the end of June. And there's a lot of lobbying that this will continue after we go back to the new normal whatever that's going to be, but I can't wait for the 20, till we get to the 21st of, of June. So I would encourage that, and I'm sure that's Raymond, that must be, in, hopefully that'll be in your newsletter if it's not there already, yeah. because it's quite a recent thing. But for every, every business, just register. And as long as you register before the 31st of March, you'll get the test sent you. Yeah. And I would like to, we have had a huge number of people here. Thank you for coming along and thank you uh, for, uh, you know, dealing with uh, technical issues at the minute. I mean, it's, it's a huge number of people that we've got in the room at the moment. And is our intention to have a number of these events um, over the coming weeks and months? So please, again, that th they will be uh, promoted via the newsletter on our website.
that's thank, so th thank you all thank you and i'm sorry we have had so many technical differences but, it, but it's always the way isn't it learning curve sorry a learning curve oh. a learning curve and thank you very much ed for being maestro <laughs> um i don't i think we've um, i don't know if we karen is, it, it came back to us if she got back ever got in no sadly not Never mind, she'll be able to watch the recording. Indeed. Indeed. Okay, so if, if you've, before we all leave um, the call, if you haven't put your name in um, for the survey and you haven't signed up for the newsletter, please do it now. And thank you, thank you everyone for joining us today. And so the South East London Chamber of Commerce has been, been delighted to work with our friends at the FSB and with our strategic partner, Lewisham Council. So thank you, everyone. And I hope to see you soon. Here we Thanks go. Much, Helen. Thanks, Bye. Raymond. Bye. Bye-bye. I'm going to stay on. Thank you. I'll, I'll stay thank on. Thank you. Yes, bye. I'll stay on, Ed. Yeah, great. We'll do a post-match analysis. That was good. Raymond and... We got Raymond still. Oh, we've lost. Ra no, we've got Raymond. I, I, thank you. I, I thank just you. Waited. Has Councillor Reid gone? Let's just um, let's just in, let's just make sure. Let's give people a bit of time to, to, to vacate. Yeah. I suppose. But, yeah, 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 yeah. But some some may also be putting up their details as well. I don't know. I'm not following the chat, Ed. But yeah, no. They're, they're, I have I'll... seen two people with their hands up, but they used to hear Raul and Alcinda. I don't know if they're. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Hi, hello. You so you've had your hand up, and don't think you've been rude not to, to to say hello. But we haven't been using the poor method. <laughs> I, I know, but I just didn't want to butt, butt in while people are talking. So, I have a quick question. I don't know if anyone can answer it. I don't know if Raymond yeah. might be able to answer it. I'm a small business. I'm an internet cafe. I'm, it's like a business center where you're coming and you use the internet um, computers. You yeah. sit sit amongst people, so it's a high risk you know, for COVID spreading if I yeah. stay open because of the close proximity and the amount of people that sits in there for a long period of time. I had been given the grant by Lucian Council. I was mm -hmm. invited to get the grant and I've provided the details. I've got the grant. I have received the um, November lockdown grants and I received for the December lockdown grants. I inquired in January about the money that was in my account from Lucian Council. And I was, um, within a couple of days, I received a letter demanding the payment back of the money, saying that I'm not entitled for the grants. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm writing back and forward to Loring and all the different departments. I paid back the money. I had to take a loan and pay that money back because, you know, I'm a straightforward business person. I don't want any sort of debt against my business. I've been trading for 14 years in Lucian Borough, providing to the local community. Um, I'm a shop and I don't understand why am I not entitled to this grant? I cannot open. I've been had people come and say, you can't open because you can't have people sitting in the shop. It's a close contact premises. And, you know, we're being punished for something that we have no choice. I've been closed since November, basically, with no help, no, no support. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, Ra sorry, your name is Rawley. Did you, is it Rawley? Yeah, yeah. Rawley. yeah Rawley. Sorry, apologies for that. And um business rate team are not in the room at the minute because they couldn't get access but uh, they will not be they will not be using their discretion as to whether to pay you or not they're using some sort of guidance which means that you for whatever you're you know you mentioned it in internet cafe got central government are saying are not eligible for it um but really i will um i will speak to the business rates team afterwards what's the name of your business in Bromley, sir um, they got loads of email i had the mp involved i have the mayor involved you know, because it's, it's really struggling for me at the moment because, I, I, you know, I've got two lots of quarter um, yeah. payments due from, yeah. from November to now. Yeah. And, you know, the first instance I took, I, I locked down because of Lucia, um, I, the first email I got, the newsletter said all business with close contacts need to close. Yeah. And to, to, you know, seal that is because I had the branch in my account. I can... That's what they sent to us. We yeah. are the ones that they applied for it. Um, unfortunately, guys, I, I've got to um, I've got to leave now because I've got another meeting. Um, but listen, I think we're we're thinking about running um, uh, another event um, to discuss the grants. But um, you sleeping? I'll, I'll call you back. Hello. Hello. Hello, Raymond. 
There's Raymond. a bit of confusion here. Ro yeah, Ro I'm afraid we've closed for questions for today. Um, okay. That's great. Um, um, Raymond, could we have your email address by any chance? Just to, just to follow up on a couple of points. It, it's, in, it, it, it's in there under economic. It's in the chat. Yeah, Is I'm it just the generic the one? Is it just the generic economics one, uh, economic team one? Yeah, they'll, yeah. They'll, they'll pick it up, don't worry. Okay, because I'm, I'm having difficulties with criteria not being followed and I'm not really getting okay. any answers from Lorraine, but I'll follow up uh, to that email address, thank you. Please do, please do. And we will have, be holding more of these. So I can see lots of hands up. I think we'll, hopefully we can, Regan. so Rawley will put his details in chat. And if anyone else has got anything, can they leave anything in chat and we'll, we'll deal with it? Hi, sorry to interrupt, but what happens if you meet the criteria? This is not just a general question. This is because I've been yeah. in touch with Vicky Foxcroft to, to contact the business rates team on my behalf. Yeah. I run a number of pub operations. One of the pub operations is within the borough. Our business rates initial valuation was set incorrectly. The VOA have now updated our valuation but there's nobody that actually you can speak to from business rates from Lewisham. Mm -hmm. So although we're actually eligible for what would be about 46,000 pounds worth of yeah. grants, yeah. I, yeah. Can't, I can't access any of those grants because business rates can't update any of our details. I have a number of operations that are outside of the borough that are in other boroughs, and there's a huge amount of communication with... <laughs> Cheshire East, with Islington, with Westminster. Chad, can I ask something? If you send it to, um, I haven't got my email address behind me, but if you send it to Helen at SE London Chamber sure. dot org, I'll, I'll pick it up. Thanks, because I, I have literally been I'll, in touch I'll with Vicky Fox I'll, I'll this week. And Sorry? I, for the last... With, I've been in touch with MP Vicky Foxtrot this She's week. My MP as well. Yeah, and mm -hmm. because for the lot, it's taken nearly three months of, and I've got I've got all the correspondence. I've got every time I've gone online, submitted Chaz, to if a you, business rate. If you come to me, because what I find very interesting from my point of view, the chamber we cover the boroughs of Royal Greenwich, Lewis, Bromley, and Bexley, and you okay. hear this, you, you know, the same sort of problem. So I'll I'll pick it up with Lewis on your behalf, okay? Thanks. So Helen, that was correspondence. I really appreciate that. So it's just Helen at Helen at F E London Chamber. That's the right e email, isn't it? Okay. I'll, put it, I'll put it in the yeah. chat. Thanks, I'll put it in the chat for you. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks. And and Chaz, so just, just just get in, in in touch. And if anyone has got any other burning issues, if you could do the same. Yeah, don't forget what the reason we're here. We want to put in our details if we want to be following up for the uh, questionnaire the survey yeah we're looking for people's details in the chat before they leave uh, hey hi i put my details in sorry to put in it's okay i see you doing sorry i can hear lots of people talking yeah, of, uh, cross uh, cross wires there hi okay. uh, it's it's roll back can i speak yeah. Yeah, hi Hi, I've put in my details and I don't know if you guys receive it, my email address and the name of my business. Right. Uh, well, I, I, what I'll do is I'll be saving the chat at the end of this. Anybody who's put their okay. email address in the chat, um, yeah. we will be able to then contact them uh, about the survey. If you wanted to contact us about something separate, um, then there's there's the various emails. There's the economy partnerships at lewisham.gov.uk for uh, direct inquiries about grants. Uh, and if it's something to do with the chamber, you can contact Helen at selondonchamber.org, which mm -hmm. are both also available in the chat. Uh, but I'm happy to put them up there again if if that's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, Raul, Raul, what was the name of your of your business again? It's Bromley Surf Limited. Bromley. Yeah, Bromley Surf. Bromley Surf. Yeah, S S U R F. Bromley Surf. Limited. You, okay. You put that's that in the chat, have you? Yeah. Yeah, I've did, Lovely. yeah. Some hundreds of messages in there, so I'll, I'll get through. I can them. see we've got chamber member artists there. Oh. Yes, hi, Helen. Is that Mark? It is. Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. 
<laughs> I've got to send you an email in when we're, I'm off this call, so I'll be emailing you a bit later. Yeah, no, no, Nick, did, uh, Nick did inform me you'll do that. But thanks for setting this up. It's um, it's, it's very useful. I, personally, I don't think I would have survived about the grant, so... Um, well, I know you've done you've done well with the. Um, just so everyone know, Artis is in Blackheath Village, um, in in the borough of Lewisham, and you know the the hospitality grants have have gone. Took a little while with the first one, didn't it? It did, it did. But then once it started, they they started coming as and when. Yes. So um, without them, like I said, we definitely wouldn't have survived. Um, yes. yes. Just, waiting for the next one now really till we can open up again unfortunately yeah yeah well, excuse me yes Hello. if you've not received anything by the deadline for the mandatory grant will that mean you've missed it or will you would it be backdated have you put the application in before the the, the close date right where we received a letter and the link was not working and then we filled out the um, submissions, the online form, the inquiry form with all the details. And yeah. today we were told if you a business rate payer, you would receive it automatically. Um, I don't know where we've gone wrong, but my colleague here but, is not- But, 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 but did, you, did you meet the deadline for the grant, whichever grant it was? For the mandatory one? Yes. Um, Yes, because for the mandatory one, which um, there was a link on the um, website, yeah. which wasn't yeah. working. So I don't know which form you're talking about because we were told that it would be automatically um, sent if you was a business rate pay payer. Is that yeah, incorrect? Well, you've got to apply, for, you, you, you know, you've got to at some point, you've got to, you've got to log into the grants. Right. So received anything as as yet no no i think the problem is with all these grants if you've missed the deadline the a deadline's a deadline that's the problem because then you know, it's quite a long time you know when they're launched and then you, you know they have a time when they when they shut off because equally the um local authorities because it's government money for mandatory grants they have to return the money to the government yes yes if it's spent. but the um so none of them was automatic you all or each one you had to apply individually because i know but, for the arg i know for the arg you have to apply yes but are you sleeping somewhere. no okay you're eating yeah. So for the one for Sorry, the please, until, you're going to restart the class because the one up until the thirty first of March can still I'm be applied. Starting, for. Um, Where can we find the work. application? Hang on, we've got all sorts of people are chattering over people. each other at the moment. I'm in, I'm in a call about Grant. Who's yattering? <laughs> I think I've got him. I think I've got him. Hang on, is that better? Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. I've got him. So, so, so to Galaxy H N. So. Have right, I'm, I'm on the website now, so yeah. because I've tried numerous occasions, I don't know if other um, businesses have said the same, but the link wasn't working, and then when you want to contact someone in the business rates team, the number just says you have to use online system, and there's yeah. an inquiry all, form. Yeah. yeah so the inquiry all. form we filled out three times, and no one's got back to us. My friend here, he doesn't speak much English, He's not an avid um, internet user, so it's very difficult. I've done that. I've submitted to them twice a week for nearly three months now. Business yeah. Days. There's no correspondence. It's ridiculous. Nothing. Uh, you don't get any response back. No help. Well, can you leave the details in the chat, please? And, and okay. just So is Galaxy A10, is that the business? No, sorry, that's the mobile phone because I didn't have my iPad with my Zoom. Oh, well, so, oh yeah. of course, how stupid of me. You, you can tell I use an iPhone, can't you? You are an Apple user, aren't you? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sorry, Helen, What's just going with the business. It's um, nice and clean hand car wash limited. Ah, okay. Um, if you put that in, in, the, in the chat, and then what I'll do, um, we'll, we'll pick it up with, we'll send it on to Lewisham in the same way, you know, we're doing, going to do it with Chad. I'd appreciate that because no, we've no, had... No, we'll do. 
Where, yeah. are, where is the car wash? On Bromley Road. Oh, I'm in Downham. Yeah, just no, before Downham. There's one in Downham, but we're next to the um, bus garage. All oh, right, right. Just so I know. <laughs> no, you, I'm actually, like, if you want your car done, I'm the body works place, but this gentleman here, he's the, the car wash man. Oh, okay. So, uh, but if you do that, we'll pick that up on your behalf, yeah. okay? Well, well, so just going back, going back to the last point that, that was just raised, when there's a deadline that's been missed, but there's no communication that's available with the council, with Lersham, in this case, talking about business rates and not communicating back, which means that your eligibility for the, for the actual grant and you miss the deadline, like mm -hmm. what's happened to us, what happens in that case? Because it's a deadline, I don't a deadline. Know. I don't know, but, but I can, all I can do oh. is I'll channel it through today with um, and we'll channel it up to them. Because yeah. um, from personal experience, yes, yes, in sorry. three other boroughs, this is not yeah. happening in other boroughs, but it's only well, in Well, yeah, because but they all have really their own issues, I can assure you. And it's not our fault, we shall never get back. Okay, please, can, can I ask a big question, please? Sorry. 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 Thank you. Lola. Yeah, please. I just wanted to ask a qu uh, question. So um, I'm an educational um, business. And in November, we were forced to lock down. And I was a refusal a, a grant. When schools were um, not, schools were open, but we were told we couldn't open. And I put the comment in there about why we were not open. It was on the um, government's website. And I, 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 um, I um what's the word? I um appealed and they still yeah. refused me. So I don't really understand it. And I haven't got anything now for this national lockdown. I haven't got anything. I haven't got anything yet. And I'm just wondering what's going on with education. Because you know, we're not, I can't, I can't um take I'm not a child, I'm a child care provider, but we cannot take children, people cannot leave their kids to us to go to work. So we we can't open. You can only open if if you if um um somebody can we can keep their child for for the whole day which we can't do okay have you tried the art grant i haven't tried the out uh, well that's um, the one grant. to try because it is it it is called it's the additional restriction grant and it is the um you know that's the one that that they have the they can the local authority has the power to you know give the grants Okay, I'll I'll try that. Anyway. Have a go I'll... with that because that's but again it's all online. But if you have a go with that, Lola, did you see the uh, did you see the link in the chat? About yes, I've copied children? it. Yeah, the I'll grab that one. Yeah. That's great because from from there, obviously, you know, we, it's a direct communication with Lewisham Council, who we are not. It has to be said. Um, yeah, uh, Chaz. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for this. Uh, thank you, Lola. Thank you. Which okay, I... Lola. Thanks. Hi, Helen. Can I ask a quick, quick question? Yeah. Hi. Who's... Hi. I have a small business in uh, Lucian Borough. So basically, from last year, I didn't get any kind of help because my business is a takeaway. And obviously, we are open. But the thing is, I applied for ART. It's been more than three weeks now, almost three weeks, sorry. Um, but I haven't heard anything from the council, or do you think I am eligible? Did you say to... you, you did the ARG, the ARG grant? Did you say? You did, yeah. Uh, um, you did. Additional restriction grant. Yeah, yeah, restriction grant. But are you yeah. still operating as a takeaway? I am operating, but obviously I did provide all the documents, how many people work for my business, and uh, well, uh, how much uh, up or down my business is. Obviously, I did provide all the documents, but currently I've been waiting. Uh, the day I submitted the application, I received one email saying that your application has been, has been submitted. And that's all pretty much. Um, unfortunately, I haven't had anything, but my business is definitely down more than 35% compared okay, to last okay. year. Let, let me speak with my colleague, Ed, because if you put your business in, you know, the name of your business in there, Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah. Because we don't know how long Sorry. That's absolutely right, Helen. No, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, what I was going to say is we are now closing the session. We just want people's details uh, with any additional information they want to share. We've got a couple of minutes left. 
for you to put your details uh, for contact and also any issues you want to raise in the chat, which we will forward to, to Lewisham Council. Uh, but okay. for now, with this session was due to finish at three o'clock. It is now quarter past three, and uh, we're going to have to call time on, on this um, session.